Okay, let's make this as simple and short and effective as possible. First of all, I hate the term reach back, but I still have to use it because everyone else do. Okay, but well, reaching back sounds bad to me because it implies that you have to do something with your arm. There is very little arm movement in a proper reach back. That is why I hate the term reach back. You don't reach and especially you don't reach back. But let's get down to it. There are three components in the reach back. First of all, we need to turn our shoulders in relation to our hips to make the rotation possible. This is a very, very important movement. This we want to achieve. The second one is we want to make some space for the disc. Here is space. Here is no space. So we need to think about that too. If you haven't seen the latest video where I talk about the arm, go check it because that is super important to understand also this video. And the third and the least important is that we need some momentum for the disc to launch out. So how do we combine these two aspects and get the third one for free? Shoulder turn and the space. First of all, the arm. In order to make some space for the disc, do the old pickpocket. The disc is in your pocket, you lift it up and then you curl the arm. Now you have a little bit more than 90 degrees angle between your elbow and the chest. Here we have space. If you go closer like this, you don't have space. This is bad. This is good. Now we have space. So this is the first part. The second part is that we need to turn the shoulders. And how do we do that? Well, I like to think that I push my throwing arm shoulder that way. So if we are throwing that way, I push the elbow and shoulder out like this. I only push out. That makes me turn. You see, I only push out and at the same time, my shoulders turn that way. You can do it by pushing the back elbow back. The same thing. You turn the shoulders. At no point am I thinking that I have to go back. There is no going back. Always go forward. Whatever you do, always go forward. Never go back. When you rotate, you go forward and rotate. Now, here's a proper stance for you to throw. It looks like this. This is a proper stance. This is the reach back stance and now all of your weight is on the back leg. And that is super bad because that is super slow. In order to come from your back leg and to throw, you need to rotate like hell. And that's why it's so hard to throw effectively without rotating like hell with the back leg. But that is another topic for another video. Now, remember that everything you do in the coil phase happens during the stride. Now we go that way, we want to throw the disc there, and here is the last step we are taking, like this, all right? Last step is like this. Notice that I'm pushing from the back leg to the front, and now I'm basically weightless from the back leg. During the stride, what do we do? We hold the disc like this and we do the shoulder turn, push the shoulder out like this. Now I'm in a reach back position. I didn't reach back. I only went forward and push the shoulders to that direction. If the T-pad is facing there, it's the left side of the T-pad. I push the shoulder and elbow out and because my front leg is in the air, I rotate at the same time. 
I coil. And I'm not reaching back. I'm only coiling like this. And now everything happens quite automatically. See? And there's space. From this angle, it looks like this. There are some mind tricks you can use, like walk around the disc, means that the disc stays here and you walk around. Same thing. But remember, what we want to achieve is the shoulder turn, not the reach back. So the disc doesn't stay in place if you go like this. So the disc stays in place when you turn the shoulders and take the stride like this. Now we have space to do the curl and the sling out. If you haven't liked or commented or shared or subscribed, please do that. I'm not making a ton of money because of this, but I sure would like to. And every share and like helps me to achieve that.